Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 6, Chemical Equilibrium. And for now, we're going to look into the subtopic of 6.2 Equilibrium Constant, part 2 of the video. So in this video, we're going to learn about the definition for the heterogeneous equilibria. And we're also going to write and write the expression for the equilibrium constant in terms of concentration, which is Kc, as well as in terms of partial pressure Kp for the, for the heterogeneous system only. And last but not least, we're going to derive and use the equation Kp is equal to Kcrt delta n. For the other part, we have looked about that in the previous video, which is in part 1. So without any further ado, let us start with part 2 of the video first. Now we're going to look into the heterogeneous equilibria. So heterogeneous equilibria will exist when the chemical equilibrium, where the reactant and product are in the different phases. So they have the states of matter of solid, solid, and gases. So in one chemical equation, they are more than one type of phases. Okay, so they have solid and gases here. So here are the example of the solid gas equilibrium in which the calcium carbonate will decompose in order to form calcium oxide, which is solid, as well as the carbon dioxide, which is in the gaseous state. So if you were to write the Kc expression, we're going to get the Kc to be CaO to the power of 1, and then we have the carbon dioxide divided by the concentration of the reactant, which is CaCO3. However, the concentration of CaCO3 and CaO is going to be constant because both of these exist in the solid state. Okay, so whatever in the solid state, it will remain constant. And that is why we're going to cancel it out. Okay? As it kita anggap it sebagai satu saja, and we're going to cancel it all together. And at last, we're going to get our Kc to be the concentration of CaO. And then if we, if we were to write our Kp, it's going to be the Kp equal to the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Because pressure can only exist for the Kc state. Okay? And as mentioned, the concentration of the pure solid, pure liquid, and solvent do not appear in the expression equilibrium constant. So, bila je nampak je solid and solid, we just going to ignore that. Okay? And then, this is because the concentration of the pure solid is constant. Which means that at a given temperature, in the solid state, they are still going to have the same number of mole per dm cube of the solid. Jadi, concentration of the solid sebenarnya tidak berubah. And that is why we assume it to be 1. And you can imagine it to be like a concentration of a solid that doesn't change at any given temperature. So, solid, tak kisah dalam keadaan macam mana sekalipun, dalam temperature yang berbeza, dia punya concentration of the solid masih sama. Alright? And the same reason applied to the pure liquid. So for the conclusion, solid and liquid do not appear in the expression equilibrium constant. Okay. And now let us look into the example. So let's say if we have a reaction of NH4H as solid, it composes into ammonia gases as well as the hydrogen sulfide gas. So the partial pressure of each gas is 0 0.265 atm. So we have to calculate the Kp for this reaction. So the first thing first, we need to write the Kp. And Kp is only applicable for the Kc state only. And for the solid state, we're just going to ignore that. So we're going to have the partial pressure of the ammonia and then multiply by the partial pressure of the hydrogen sulfide. So we're going to have it, have it to be something like this. And then it was stated that the partial pressure of each gases is 0 0.625. Okay, so we're going to insert it into the equation here, which is 0 0.265 multiplied by 0 0.265. And once we do the math, we're going to get the Kp to be 0 0.0702. So the Kp for this reaction is going to be 0 0.0702. As simple as that. Okay. And now we're going to learn on how to relate Kp and Kc. So let's say if we were to consider this general equation here, which is Ea gas 
that's BB gas produces CC gas as well as the BB gas. So if we were to write the KC expression, we're going to get C to the power of C, D to the power of D, A to the power of the stoichiometry A, and then B to the power of stoichiometry B. And the same thing we can do, we can also do that for the KP. So partial pressure of C to the power of C, B to the power of D, A to the power of A, and B to the power of B. And if we were to assume that the gas we have ideally, we're going to get PV is equal to NRT, and then we're going to bring the V to the right-hand side. So we're going to get N over V. And as what you know that, the N over V here is basically refers to the concentration because it refers to the number of mole divided by the volume of the solution. Okay, So it basically refers to the concentration. And for that reason, we can put it as P N V over RT. And if you were to specify it for reactant A, so we're going to put the number of mole of A and NV here refer to the concentration of A. So similarly, we can repeat that for B and B over V, we're going to get concentration of B and then C, we're going to get concentration of C and then D, we're going to get the concentration of D. So we're going to get all this uh, relation here. And from this understanding, we're going to substitute the value of PA, PB, PC and PD from the equation that we have um, made, which is the KP here. So we're going to substitute PC to the power of C. We're going to put it there. So PC is basically equal to the delta, is equal to the concentration of CRT to the power of C. And then we have PD. So we're going to have concentration of DRT to the power of D. And then PA here, we're going to get concentration of ART to the power of A. And then for PB, we're going to get concentration of B, RT to the power of B. Okay, masukkan satu-satu. And from here, you can uh, expand the uh, power, which is C to the power of C, RT to the power of C, D to the power of D, RT to the power of D, and then A to the power of small a, RT to the power of A, and then B to the power of B, and then RT to the power of B. And now, you can classify the concentration together. So, TD and here. So, RT, you're going to uh, factor out here. Okay? And then C plus D minus A minus B because it is at the denominator part. And then the C, 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 D, D, A, A, B, B going to be factor out on this side here. Okay, and then as what you can see, C, C, D, D, A, A, B, B is equal to K, C. Okay, sama. Jadi, we can change the term here to be K, C, R, T. And at this part here, we can change it into delta N. In which delta N is equal to C plus D minus A plus B. Alright. And delta N here is basically equal to the total number of mole for the gaseous product minus the total number of mole for the gaseous reactant. And R here is still the same as before, which is it refers to the gas constant, which is 0 0.08206 liter atm per mole per Kelvin. And T here refers to the temperature in Kelvin. Let's say is your if your delta n is zero, then you're gonna be you can insert your zero to be here, and then you know that when r t to the power of zero, a to the power of zero is equal to one, right? So similarly, r t is equal to zero. It means that it's also gonna to refer to one. Therefore, k p is equal to k c, and this situation can be uh, looked into here because if you were to find the delta n. Okay, so the delta N of the product is going to be 2, so gaseous. And then for the reactant, it's going to be 1 plus 1. So it's going to be 2 minus 1 plus 1. So it's going to be 0. And that is why you can see that when it has delta N equal to 0, then straight away, we can know that Kp is equal to Kc. Okay? 
So now we're going to look into the example that relates Kp and Kc. So the equilibrium concentration for the reaction between carbon monoxide, which is CO, and the molecular chlorine. So the molecular chlorine here refers to Cl. So we're going to form COCl2 at 74 degrees Celsius are given to be this concentration. So we need to determine the equilibrium constant for Kc as well as for Kp. So the first thing first, we need to write the equation. So the equation that we have is CO, which is in gaseous state, add up with the chlorine in gaseous state in order to produce the COCl2, which is in equilibrium. So we need to ensure that the equation is balanced. Okay, And then we know that the concentration is given at equilibrium. And then we can write the Kc first. So the Kc uh, is equal to the concentration of the product to the power of 1, which is the circular to the power of 1, divided by the concentration of the reactant, CO to the power of 1, Cl to the power of 1. And then we're going to substitute the value of the concentration at equilibrium. So CO, Cl2 is basically 0 0.14 divided by CO, which is 0 0.012, and then your Cl2 is 0 0.054. So once you do the math, you're going to get your Kc to be 216. Okay, and now you can find your Kp. So you know that Kp is basically equal to Kc RP delta N. Okay, equation yang kamu dah derived tadi. Okay, so you're going to be looking something like this. So you need to find your Kp. Kc is your, you already known from the equation. R is the gas constant, and then the temperature is obtained from here, in which you need to convert that into Kelvin by adding with 273.15. And then the delta N here, you can obtain it from the stoichiometry of the product minus reactant for the gaseous state. Okay, so if you were to find our delta N, it's going to have the number of mole of the product is 1 minus 1 plus 1. So it's going to be minus 2. So delta N that we're going to have here is minus 1. So R is known as 0 0.08206 because it is a gas constant. And then the temperature, we're going to convert that into Kelvin. So we can plug in the value here, which is Kp is equal to Kc, which is 216. And then our R here is 0 0.08206. And then our temperature is 347.15. And then our delta N is negative 1. Okay, so once we do the maths here, the Kp that we're going to get is 7.58, in which it has no unit. Okay, sebenarnya, macam secerita mula-mula, Kp actually has the unit. But in this syllabus, Kp is treated to be dimensionless. So the value just going to be written as 7.58 without any unit. Okay. So I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye.